Welcome to our worship celebration. I'm glad that you found this video and you're joining us today for worship. We have a lot of people watching. In fact, we found that our attendance has not only held up, but it's probably increased with the, with the recording of the videos every week. And I appreciate you taking the time to find it and to worship with us. The message this morning will be on fear. I heard of one man who had no fear. Well, actually, he had one fear. His fear was of alligators. But when those beaches opened up in Florida, he just couldn't wait to get there and go swimming. He found a beach with a, had a lot of people, and none of them were wearing masks, but he wasn't afraid of the virus. He wasn't afraid of the people or the crowds. He jumped in the water and started swimming, was feeling so good about it. Then he turned to an old-timer not too far away, and he said, Hey, old-timer, tell me, do you have any gators in these waters? And the old man said, Nope, haven't seen a gator around here for years. Feeling comforted by that, the man swam out a little bit deeper into the water. Then he turned to his new friend, and he said, Well, how did you get rid of the gators? And the guy said, We didn't get rid of them. Sharks got them. Now, I don't know what it is that you might fear, but we're going to be talking about that in a few minutes this morning. I do want to tell you that everything you need to know about what our church is doing right now can be found in the publication, The Window. Uh, the only way you can get that publication is by email or go to the website. All of the information is there on the first page of our website www.fumcloveland.com. You don't even have to go past the first page. Everything we're doing is on the first page. Uh, you may need to know that we've got a couple important things coming up. Um, you're invited to sign a guest book for Reverend Jeremiah. Uh, expressing to him what he's meant to you, that you'll miss him. This guest book will be available only one day, Tuesday, June 30. It'll be here at the church from 10 to 2, outside the church. Uh, please stop by sometime between 10 and 2 and sign that guest book. Also, dinner groups have started up again. All the information is here in the window or it's on the front page of the website. We have a new book study. The Oasis study has just gotten started. They are studying Bishop Karen Olivito's book, Talking About Homosexuality, a Congregational Resource. Uh, if this sounds like something that you would enjoy being a part of, the group is brand new, and they would love to have you sit in and be a part of that group. Just going through the window here, with so many things going on in the church. This week we've got a financial report that you might be interested in looking at. Speaking of finances, thank you for your giving. Some of you have turned to online giving the information on how to do that is right here in the window or, as I said, on the front page of the website. Um, some people are sending checks in. The mission and the ministry of the church goes on. Just because we're not in a building uh, doesn't mean that we're not out there in the world doing what needs to be done. And because of you, um, well, you're just making it possible for us to do that. Still thumbing through the window, on the back page, we are starting to put in prayer concerns. Uh, we're praying for one another. Uh, I've got a couple names listed here. We try to keep it generic since this is a digital publication. And I won't be reading names on a recorded message such as this. But uh, do keep your church in prayer, please. Keep the individuals in, in prayer that, uh, that have health concerns and other needs. And keep our world in prayer at this time. Thank you for worshiping with us. Let's all just take a deep breath now. Let's center our minds and our hearts on God. 
Let us worship. join me in prayer. Loving God, we praise and thank you for your many promises to us, promises that offer us hope in times of fear, the promise of the rainbow that life would continue on earth, the promise to Abraham that you will care for those who trust in you, the promise of the resurrection that evil and death are overcome, the promise of the risen Christ to his followers that he will be with us forever. Loving God, we praise and thank you for your many promises to us, promises that offer us hope in times of fear and uncertainty, light for the darkest days, courage when faced with suffering or pain, joy in the midst of sorrow, support for when we feel weak or alone. Pray for those that have had surgery this week or are healing from infection those who are suffering from the effects and losses of coronavirus. Loving God, we praise and thank you for your many promises to us, promises that offer us hope in times of fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior, please pray with me the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm preaching a series of sermons on powerful statements of Jesus. We'll be looking at a new one today. The statement you'll find many times in the Gospels. But today I'm going to read from Matthew 10, verses 26 to 31, out of the voice translation. Jesus says, Do not be afraid of those who may taunt or persecute you. Everything they do, even if they think they're hiding behind closed doors, will come to light. All their secrets will eventually be made known. And you should proclaim in the bright light of day everything I have whispered to you in the dark. Whatever whispers you hear, shout them from the rooftops of houses. Don't fear those who aim to kill just the body but are unable to touch the soul. Look, if you sold a few sparrows, how much money would you get? A copper coin, a piece perhaps? And yet your Father in heaven knows when those small sparrows fall to the ground. You are beloved. You are worth so much more than a whole flock of sparrows. God knows everything about you even the number of hairs on your head. So do not fear. The powerful statement of Jesus coming out of this passage is, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Jesus' solution to fear is to remind us that God is greater than anything that we fear. Fear can become an intolerable disease in our lives. Oh, it has its place. It, it does. 
If we didn't feel fear, we might walk out in front of moving traffic. Or we might take unnecessary risks and cause financial harm or physical harm to ourselves or other people. Fear keeps us cautious and helps us to make better decisions. Fear has its place, but too much fear can take over. And Jesus' remedy for too much fear is to depend on God. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, Fear defeats more people than any other one thing in the world. Isn't that true? Let me tell you about a Mexican bandit by the name of Jose Rodriguez. A Texas ranger went down into Mexico years ago looking for this bandit so that he could return some of the money that he stole to Texas banks. He walked into a, a cantina and he recognized Jose Rodriguez at the counter of the cantina. He slowly went up behind the, 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 the bandit and he held his gun to the back of his head and he said, Jose Rodriguez, I know who you are. And I know that you have stolen a lot of money from Texas banks. I intend to take that money back if you don't give it to me. I'm going to blow your head off. Now the problem was, Jose Rodriguez didn't know a word of English. He didn't have a clue what the Texas Ranger was saying, and the Ranger didn't speak a word of Spanish. A little boy came over and he said to the Ranger, Sir, I'm bilingual. I can translate for you. And so the ranger said, then tell Jose Rodriguez that I know who he is. I know he took all that money. And if he doesn't tell me where it is so I can take it back, I'm going to blow his head off. The little boy translated that to, to the bandit. And Rodriguez said, don't shoot. Don't shoot. I'll tell him where all the money is. All the money is actually right here in town. There's a well on the north side of town. There's some loose bricks behind the well. You pull out the, the, the bricks and all of the money he's looking for is there. Just tell him, don't shoot. The little boy turned to the Texas Ranger and he said, Jose Rodriguez is a very brave man. He dares you to shoot. <laughs> that, that boy was no dummy. Now, for Jose Rodriguez, there was no greater fear at that moment than looking down the barrel of a gun. And in some ways, we all look down the barrels of guns, don't we? I don't know what the barrel of the gun is for you, it may be cancer. It, it may be a health concern that is overwhelming to you. That could be the barrel of your gun. Maybe it's a loss of jobs. I've talked to people who've recently lost their job due to the epidemic, and they feel as if they're looking down the barrel of a gun. They have people to support, and they don't know where to look. Maybe it's a new baby. Now, that shouldn't be a frightening experience, but I remember that uh, when I was a new father, it was extremely frightening to me. I, it wasn't the baby that was scary. I didn't know if I was going to be a good father. I was pretty sure I wasn't, and I was scared. Maybe the barrel of the gun for you is death. A lot of people are afraid of dying. Uh, Woody Allen said, I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. I think that's the way a lot of people feel. They just don't want to be there when it happens. Our world is scary, too. It really is. I think it is scarier than it's ever been before. Um, and, and, and part of it is that we perceive it being scarier than it really is. I want to talk to you about a disorder that... Millions of people in this country feel, or around the world, actually. This disorder is called Mean World Syndrome. 
Mean world syndrome is a term that was coined by a communications expert by the name of George Gerbner. And, and what it means is, is that millions of people believe that this world is more hostile than it really is. And that's a result of them being told again and again and again that we live in a scary society, that terrible things are going to happen. We have got to be careful. We've got to watch out. This world cannot be trusted. We keep hearing that message. So the perception of people is that the world is actually scarier than it really is. Now, how do you feel when you check your news feed or read your newspaper or watch broadcast news on television? Um, do you feel ra rather neutral through it all? Or do you leave with an impending sense of doom and high anxiety and stress and, and maybe even fear? Uh, the latter describes the way most people feel, even to the point of hopelessness. And why is that? Well, one reason is, is because maybe we have too much media coverage these days. I remember when we would just watch the news at five o'clock on television, or maybe we would read our newspapers if we had a chance. Now we've got news all day long. It comes on our cell phones. It comes over the internet. It's, it's on cable TV and regular TV and the radio, and, and it, it, we're, we're just bombarded with news. It's in social media. But another reason is that news, uh, news companies compete with other entertainment. So they have to present the news in such a way that, that it gets us to read. Headlines, for instance, may exaggerate a problem in order for us to get us to read that particular article. And we respond to all of this with fear and anxiety. We, we demand more security in, uh, around us. We want stronger police and stronger military. We, uh, we want to live in more secure environment. We, we move to gated communities. We want to build a wall. We want to surround ourselves from all the evil that's out there and protect ourselves. Now, I, I want to give you an example of of what I'm talking about. Last Wednesday, I prepared this message. And in order to illustrate this point about the headlines giving us the, the sense of anxiety and insecurity which promotes mean world syndrome, I started looking for headlines uh, from, from the media. I only pulled up one newspaper one national newspaper, let me say this is not a grocery store tabloid. It is National News Company. In order to keep this talk from being too political, I'm not going to say which one it was, but it was one of the big ones in our country. And these were the headlines. One day last week, an arbitrary day. Listen to these. U.S. takes out Al-Qaeda leader with knife-spewing missile. Now, that's just terrifying. A, a missile coming out of nowhere, I guess a drone maybe, and it spews knives? Can you just imagine that? A, a, a weapon that spews knives and can surgically remove people from this planet. I don't know if I want to live in that kind of a world. That's frightening. Another headline, same newspaper. Sex offender who attacked woman, 92, released with tickets in past three arrests. Now, I didn't read the article, but the headline would have us believe that a sex offender, it, it doesn't say whether the, the offense against this 92-year-old woman was a sexual offense. It just says a sex offender attacked a 92-year-old woman. He'd been arrested three times before, and he got tickets. I, I don't know what that means. It sounds like there was a slap on the wrist, and they let him go so that he could prey on the elderly in America. Be careful. You see, that, that's what that headline's telling us. Be careful. Be careful. Very careful. 
Here's another one, same newspaper. North Korea redeploying troops, resuming military exercises. What? North Korea is redeploying troops? Is North Korea going to war? Now, what made this particularly frightening is that this headline came underneath a picture, a photograph of an urban era, uh, urban area being bombed. There were buildings that were just exploding all over this, the, the, this photograph. I looked for a caption on the photograph to find out where was this taken? When was it taken? What's it all about? There was nothing, nothing about the photograph. It probably came from a different part of the world. It probably came from years and years ago. I don't know, but they positioned it right above that headline so that you would get the idea that North Korea is about ready to come and bomb America. Be afraid and be careful. Another headline, same newspaper. Portland demonstrators use rope from flag to lock cops in precinct. I mean, really? The demonstrators take the rope off of a flag, presumably an American flag, a symbol of freedom. They take the rope and they lock the protectors of society up in their own precinct with this American flag rope. What is this world coming to? Be careful. People cannot be trusted. And then this one. Blind woman. I like the way that that starts. They want you to know that she's sightless. Blind woman. Banned from park for two years for sharing Jesus. Really? A woman who cannot see is, is spending time in her neighborhood park presumably, and she's just doing what her church has asked her to do, sharing her faith, and she's banned from the park for two years? Who's running our government? Be afraid. Be afraid. Same newspaper. Russian bombers intercepted off Alaska coast for second time in a week. Russian bombers. Of course, it doesn't say whether the planes actually had live bombs, but Russian bombers, what are they going to do? Are they going to bomb Anchorage? And thank goodness for our Air Force, we intercepted them. What would have happened if we didn't go up there and intercept them? Would, have Alaska, would Alaska have been bombed by Russia? We've got North Korea to worry about over here. They're deployed. Now there's, there's, there's a threat from Russia. Be careful. Another one, same newspaper. Group attacks customer outside Texas convenience store. A group of what? You know, a group of businessmen? A group of Shriners? A group of teenage thugs? A group of Boy Scouts? A group of zombies? I mean, that's the way that it's written. You've got a customer here outside of a convenience store just, just doing commerce like we all do, and all of a sudden this group materializes and attacks that person. Sounds like crazed zombies, an apocalyptic something. One more, one more. Same newspaper. Remember, this is major media. This is not a tabloid that you're going to find in a grocery store. Saharan dust cloud moving across Atlantic may reach Gulf Coast next week. Oh, we're worried about North Korea. We're worried about the Russians. We've got this coronavirus thing that, that we're worried about. Oh, and I had skipped one on the coronavirus. I may get back to that. We've got, we've got crime in our streets and 92-year-old and women getting attacked. And, and now there's a dust storm that is moving across the Atlantic Ocean. And in just a few days, it's going to be in, in, in the Gulf states. What's it going to do? Is, is it... it, it what else do we have to worry about? It's frightening. Be afraid. Be careful. 
the coronavirus one that I, I had skipped, by the way, is, is, is interesting also. Um, uh, yeah, I don't find the wording of it, but, um, but what it says is that a woman is, a, is tested for coronavirus for the second time. In other words, she is found to have the disease the second time. She got over it once, and now after a second testing, she's found to have it again. And what does that mean for us? Does that mean we can get sick again and again, and this thing is never going to go away, and it's just going to escalate? And be afraid. You see, be very afraid. Be worried. You remember that, that when the whole corona uh, epidemic has started... Uh, was starting to be talked about in this country, and we started talking about uh, sheltering at home and so forth, one of the first things that happened was that toilet paper disappeared off the shelves of stores around the country. It was weeks before many of us could buy toilet paper. We often thought, well, what's that all about? And the cartoonists, of course, picked it up right away. I like this particular cartoon here. Um, she says, I'm not sure what cures the coronavirus, but I think it's toilet paper. Uh, there's a couple cartoons that came out of Colorado that are wonderful too. This one from the Colorado Sun is showing a picture of the Colorado Convention Center with the big blue bear looking in the window, only now he's wearing a face mask, and the caption is, poor guy, he's still looking for some place that has toilet paper. Or another one out of Colorado Springs, the, uh, the, tri the Gazette, the Tribune, um, it shows a, a person who is barricaded behind a fortress of toilet paper, uh, and all you see are the eyes peering out. Uh, and evidently, he's sheltering from coronavirus. Um, who bought all the toilet paper? What was that all about? NBC News reported that there was a study done where they actually went to the people who were hoarding the toilet paper, find out what was going on, and yes, some were buying it in order to profit uh, off of the misery of other people. They would buy tons of it and, and try to resell it on, on eBay or, or, or other sites. But most of the people who bought all that toilet paper were simply hoarding it. They were afraid. In fact, the, the study says, reported by NBC News, is that these people stockpiling toilet paper scored high in emotionality. And then they described that term, meaning they tended to be more fearful and anxious than the rest of the population. You see, it's fear. It's fear. And, and, and we're living in a world of fear. We, have, we live with uh, the mean world syndrome, and we believe that the world is more hostile and fearful than it's, it's ever been before. Uh, the paper, the toilet paper shortage is just one response to the fear that we have. So what do you do when you're afraid? You could do like my dogs. I've got two dogs, and one of them is deathly afraid of loud noises. Anything that sounds like a, a, uh, a gunfire, such as fireworks, Fourth of July is, is dreadful for that dog. And when I'm in the house and I'm chewing gum and I pop the gum, that poor dog, he just runs into the bedroom and goes into the closet and hides under my clothing. He just can't be around it. He isn't going to protect me in a gunfight, that's for sure. The second one has no fear of, of popping noises and loud noises. What he's afraid of, of is skateboarders. Uh, if he sees a kid going down the street on a skateboarder, he literally trembles all over. If he's on a leash, he strains to get away from it. He cannot tolerate, he cannot be near a skateboard. Um, run hide, duck our heads. That's what the dogs do when they're afraid. What do we do? And what should we do when we're afraid? I think this is where our spiritual life comes in. Jesus says, be not afraid. Be not afraid. You know, fear is cause to pause. Let's use it that way. Fear is a cause to pause. Uh, Pause and exercise your faith. Pray. Ask God, is this thing I'm afraid of keeping me from loving you? 
Is this thing I'm afraid of keeping me from loving other people the way that you want me to? Is it keeping me from becoming the person you really want me to be? Pray. Use this time to reflect. Ask questions like, what's behind this fear? Is, is this thing true? Is, is it real? Should I really be worried about this? Is it really that scary? Take some time to reflect, to think about it. And take time to seek, to understand. Um, Ask questions like, what am I missing here? Is there more for me to learn about this situation so that I won't be afraid? What's really going on? Marie Curie said this. She said, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. That's a great uh, cure for fear, understanding. Fear is a cause to pause. Pause to exercise your faith, to pray, to reflect, to understand. And, and as you look at this thing that you're afraid of, if, if it's real, if it's something you really should be worried about and anxious about, remember this. Dragons can be defeated. This is coming from something G.K. Chesterton once said. He said, fairy tales are more than true. Because they, uh, not because they tell us dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. That's what we need to hear. Don't need to hear that dragons exist, whatever we call a dragon. We need to hear that dragons can be defeated. We can beat them. And Jesus reminds us over and over again, we never fight this battle alone. God is with us. Look at the sparrows, says Jesus. Uh, God takes care of them, and aren't you worth much more than sparrows? Why, even God, God even knows how many hairs are on the top of your head, and that's easier to count in my case than in a lot of other people, people's cases. Jesus is saying, don't worry. God's got this thing. God's got this thing. Fear not. That's one of the most powerful statements that Jesus ever uttered. And today we need to hear that more than ever before. Fear not. Don't be afraid. The world is not as hostile as you probably think it is. There are good people out there. It is a safe world. Uh, there are people that can be trusted in this world. Don't be afraid of the world. And, and if you fear something, remember God is greater than your fear. You are not alone. Don't be afraid. Uh, dragons, no matter how frightening they seem today, can be beaten. Whatever you're afraid of, God's got this. Amen. Oh, the